awakening to universal knowledge and consciousness through uplifting interviews and soul-stirring conversations to help you realize the divine power, force, and energy inside of you, your Sacred Valley. Expand your mind and free your spirit with Sacred Valley Podcast. Happy New Year. Welcome back to Sacred Valley. I've been off for a couple of weeks, but I'm very, very happy to be back with you. And today we have a really great show. We have the Kate Awakening coming up. She's a podcast extraordinaire. But we also um, have an update here with um, Sean Morgan quickly. So Sean is here to talk to us about why crypto and Bitcoin and the technology behind it is changing our world and why you need to learn how to use it to protect yourself from the centralized banking authorities out there. Sean, thanks for coming back to Sacred Valley. You bet. Yeah, you know, this is something I'm passionate about, uh, you know, the Great Awakening in general. It, it's basically the way I define the Great Awakening, and it's at a lot of different dimensions, but it's just people on this planet waking up to the scam, you know, of of the centralized authorities, how they've been feeding off of our energy. So the corruption, really, the corruption in all the different institutions, certainly in the financial institutions, that's kind of at the root of the control matrix system. And luckily, that old story, that old system, it's dying. It's, it's about to implode on itself. Uh, there's just too much debt. It's unsustainable. And the old powers that be are uh, you know, just not going to be in power much longer. And luckily, we have a different financial system that's being birthed in the last few years. And uh, some people know it as blockchain. And it's actually more than blockchain. It's decentralized ledger technology, DLT. And uh, the most famous one is, is Bitcoin. And so, yes, I'm very passionate about it. I teach about it. I've worked for two different cryptocurrency companies, and I have a course about it as well. You are the expert here. I love how you tie that in with the Great Awakening because it's so true. We're awakening to so many things, so many scams. So we've been bamboozled for a very long period. I have my whole entire life, which means you have because you're younger than me. And um, the, the centralized banking is definitely a big part of it. And you're so knowledgeable. So you've created some products for people that we're going to talk about. And you know, I really find that despite what is seeming to be widespread coverage, maybe it's just because we live in our little bubble and the people that we we relate to are talking about crypto and Bitcoin. And I recently got into it last year, finally. I'm not going to say I completely understand it, but there's still a lot of um, skepticism. There's still a lot of people who, if they don't understand something, they just either ignore it or they don't do anything about that. So what do you say to those people who are a little bit frightened about getting involved? Well, I just use the internet and the tech boom as an analogy because there was a time when people didn't feel comfortable with email. They didn't want to learn how to type on a computer. Uh, they didn't want to buy a computer. They didn't know what a smartphone was at one point. But then eventually people realized that, hey, we probably shouldn't be uh, buying stamps and sending things by snail mail and wait, waiting weeks for a response. This is so inefficient. We have the technology to communicate at the speed of light. And that's where we're at now with money and, and, and transactions, cross-border payments. I mean, uh, I live in Brazil, do business in the U.S., have to do cross-border payments all the time. And it takes days. It's just yeah. extremely clunky and slow. But with crypto, with Bitcoin, you can do that at the speed of light. You can do it privately. But the problems with the old system are, you know, there's just not enough transparency and so, and that's why there's corruption. Where there's darkness, there's corruption. So, what blockchain, DLT, Bitcoin, and other types of cryptocurrencies are bringing is transparency. And also, the ability, even though there's transparency, for you to also choose privacy uh, away from those centralized authorities as well. So, you can have both privacy and transparency at the same time. It mm -hmm. seems counterintuitive, but that's what crypto allows us to do. And people are just intimidated by the technology. But in reality, it's not any more complicated than what you're doing now with your bank account and your debit card and all of those things. It's just that you're used to those technologies. So people just need to get involved, start to learn. I have a free you know, book that people can get at freebitcoinbook.net. But if you want to really just learn everything, I have a course. It's $77. And you get a series of videos, cartoons, and animations, an audiobook, and an ebook, and you get lifetime access to that. You're going to learn the six steps of crypto, how to buy it, sell it, store it, spend it, all of the different things that you can do with it. You're going to learn all the basics. So this sounds like it's a beginner's course. So if someone is intimidated, they might buy this course and 
it's kind of like a 101 for Bitcoin users. Is that what you're saying? Yes, it's absolutely for the absolute beginners, people who are not tech savvy, starting from zero, you can learn all the basics and it doesn't take long to consume this course, just a few hours, uh, but you can watch them over and over and over again. You can uh, you know, share these resources with others as well. So it's a really great resource and there is temporarily uh, a coupon so you can get 20% off with the coupon code Bitcoin20. I'm going to put all that information down below. I think this is fantastic. I don't know what the percentage is, but I, I heard last week, it's a tiny, tiny percentage of people who are actually buying either gold and silver or they're involved in crypto. crypto. I was I was shocked because like I said, I'm, I'm red in the rainbow. I feel like everyone that I know is involved in crypto in one way, shape or form. But do you know what the actual percentage is or what, what people are saying about how many people are getting involved? It's, we're still in the very, very early days. Uh, you know, there, are, believe it or not, the United States has the highest penetration rate of uh, cryptocurrency and Bitcoin usage, but it's still way less than one percent of people who are actually using it. Uh, so, so we're very, very early. Just think of if you could have invested in Google or Amazon, uh, you know, at the very early days. That's where you're at with this opportunity with uh, Bitcoin and other cryptos. So it doesn't sound like people have too much to lose. What do you think the biggest risk factor is for people who are just getting started? Yeah, I mean, one risk factor is not getting involved. Right? Just mm. like for those of you who didn't invest in Amazon in the 90s or the early 2000s, you missed out on mm. becoming a millionaire with a small you know, investment. So yeah, when you don't invest in Bitcoin, just like people who didn't invest in Bitcoin in 20, 2011, uh, you, know, you missed out on the greatest asset of the last decade. So there's the opportunity cost of not getting involved. Uh, but yeah, if you do get involved, there, there are risks. And that's kind of the whole point of the course is that we teach all of the things you can do to protect yourself uh, from scams, from getting hacked, all these different things. And so uh, it's better just to get involved with a small amount of money that you wouldn't even mind losing. You know, five, 10 bucks is all you really need to get started and learn the basics. Well, unfortunately, that doesn't buy Bitcoin anymore. I was one of the late bloomers. Um, I well, you don't need to buy a whole Bitcoin, right? You can <laughs> just buy a fraction of a Bitcoin. Very few people own a whole Bitcoin because they're worth almost $50,000 right now. I remember being um, picked up from an airport a few years ago from um, a nephew of mine, and he was much, much, much younger than me. And he was talking about Bitcoin. And when, when I got to the house later, I had opened up my email, and I was getting inundated with emails about Bitcoin. It was the, literally the first conversation I ever had about it. And that was probably five years ago. God, I look back and go, man, why didn't I just listen to what he was saying and read those emails? Because I would probably own a lot more Bitcoin than I do right now. But I at least feel good that, you know, if I have money sitting in the bank, which I do, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel, I don't feel confident. I don't know what to do with it. I don't know what's going to happen to it in the future. I know friends who are from Venezuela and their family literally back in the 80s got all of their money confiscated. They had all their money, all their retirement, and they're in their 80s now and they still have to work because their money literally disappeared overnight. We're at historic inflation rates. Uh, you know, the dollars in your account are losing value by 20% a year minimum. And uh, the, the chair of the FDIC just resigned. And you know, maximum in your bank account, the, the government insures only up to $100,000. And I believe one of the reasons that that person resigned is because they're not confident that the FDIC can even insure all the banks if there was a bank run today. So yeah, cash, although you, you want to have some cash, definitely. It also, like I said, you're losing value just by keeping it in cash. So uh, we're going to talk about all of these things uh, in other programs that I have going. So make sure that you you know go to my website, um, which is seanmorganreport.com. You can find out everything that I'm up to, join the email list, and, and make sure you use the links in the description below for the course. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Sacred Valley Podcast. Um, if you were here for when Sean Morgan was here, I do apologize. We lost internet for a moment. I'm very excited to introduce the co-founder of We The Media, and she is a podcaster extraordinaire and someone I really look up to, and I'm really happy to have on. It's the Kate Awakening. Welcome, Kate. Hi. Thank you for having me. Oh, my God. You know, we've been through a lot over the last few weeks. You've been very kind. Um, I, I, like a lot of our viewers, that I've had the Rona. You know, I was really sick and uh, couldn't do anything, couldn't couldn't, I lost my life for two weeks, basically, and you were very kind and very understanding about rescheduling and rescheduling, so I do appreciate that. Oh, well, I'm really sorry you're sick, and as somebody who's had it probably every single every single strand of coronavirus since my, my first time getting it 
was the was January of 2000 what was it 20 I guess uh like a few weeks before our official oh before, uh, you didn't April. know that was you didn't know that was the Rona back then no I yeah. didn't and I was I was laid up for a month my mother who's in her 70s diabetic has a mechanical heart valve she is prone to strokes you know all like everything oh she's a smoker um, she got it too. She went to the hospital. Her, her oxygen was at 70% and they treated her. She was great in four days and out of the hospital and like better than ever. I had her, when we figured out what it was months later, I had her go back and look at what they gave her in the hospital, in the hospital. It was ivermectin. Are you kidding me? Nope. Oh, that was before it was banned. Exactly. This was, wow. this was, yeah. That's, that's insane. And it, it's, um, it makes my blood boil at the same time because I actually started taking it. I'm so stubborn. I, I waited a week because I didn't think I had, I thought whatever I had, I thought it was just what I've always had. You know, I had like a sore throat and I'm like, oh, this is just normal. And it took me, I, I should not have waited, but mm. wow, that is amazing. Cause she was one of the last people that was treated with ivermectin back then. Yeah, probably. And you know, I had, uh, so, you know, I got sick again and I went through America, America's frontline doctors. This was like a year later. And um, I was speaking with the doctor. I absolutely loved him. I was talking to him for like an hour, really. And um, he was already prescribing me hydroxychloroquine because I was I was starting to have all the symptoms of it. But then I told him, you know, I actually think I had it a year ago also. And I haven't really felt quite right since then. And he said, you know, having heard that, I'm also going to prescribe you ivermectin. And he he gave me enough so that I would be able to treat my illness right now, but I could take it prophylactically. The mm. hydroxychloroquine I was taking once a week and then the ivermectin I was taking once a month. And it got to the point where I started seeing people, it, these medicines were really hard to get. So then I'm like, well, I better preserve what I have just in case my elderly right. parents get sick, my child, like whatever it is. So I stopped taking it. And then like a week later, I got sick again. Yeah. yeah. It's sad because it's something that is so easily attainable in other countries. It's so cheap. I mean, it, it doesn't get any cheaper than what this, these medications are yet. We're not allowed to have them. And, you know, when I, I had gone through the same people to get a, a prescription of ivermectin a few months ago, just in case, mm -hmm. and they prescribed it and they sent the prescription to Walgreens right here on the corner of where I live. And I drove up in my car outside to the drive through behind the glass and the doctor behind the glass with a mask on said, um, no, we're not going to fill this for you. You're not sick. You know, I had a refill on my last prescription and same thing with CVS. They called me up and they said, um, what is this medication for? Which <laughs> none of your business. Exactly. I said, I have a parasite. They said, what kind of a parasite? I was like, I don't know. And then they hung up with me and I was able to refill it. So wow. yeah, that was a smart answer actually on your part. Cause yeah, it is, I mean, ivermectin is a parasitical medication. Yeah. So. Yeah, you know, this just brings us to the state of where we are right now. And I know you've been involved in this truth movement. You've been podcasting since pretty much day one from like the Q drops. Is that right? Well, no, not not since day one. So I got into the Q drops in February 2018. Q started posting in at the, you know, basically October, November um, of 2018. 17. So it was a few months after that I got into it. And I first started on Twitter. I was just tweeting. <laughs> and I didn't start my YouTube channel for a while after that. But, you know, I was kind of just like jumping into the mix on Twitter, which is where I felt that's where like the battlefield was. It still is in a way. I know that you can't be on there anymore. I was just kicked off recently twice, yeah. but I'm back on and like clandestinely. We'll see what happens. <laughs> so am I actually. I have, oh, good. I, you would never know it was me. I have like 35 followers, <laughs> but I'm still just being an a-hole and it feels good. <laughs> oh, I love it. You know, it's so, I mean, we have to laugh, right? I mean, I am my father's daughter and I, sense of humor is such a big thing in life. Everything. You have to have a sense of humor. And right now we need a sense of humor because if we don't laugh right now, we're just going to crawl into a hole and be depressed and not be able to come out of it. Because this, right. this is some crazy stuff going on in our world right now, Kate. It's it's true. And, you know, as going back to the sense of humor thing, that was actually weaponized against us. They took all of these late night news shows and SNL and all of these things, and they were using humor to kind of brainwash us. And it wasn't until they got to the point where like their humor, their humor kind of started to go out the window because they were so driven by hate oh. that shines through. You can't be funny and be coming from a nasty place. 
Right. But you can make, if you're poking fun at things, that's why things like South Park work and whatever that are poking fun at everything and everyone. That's why those things are funny and they can be ridiculous and outlandish. But when we can start to get back into our sense of humor, you're going to, you're going to be so much more potent as far as getting people on your side and getting them to listen to you. If you can deliver it with a little bit of, you know, of a sense of humor, a little bit of levity. So maybe this will be about, you know, sense of humor, like humor, spirituality, and current events, because <laughs> combining all of them is so important. You know, we are human beings, but we're having, we're spiritual beings living a human experience. And right now I'm very addicted to the human experience. So, you know, I've been a yoga teacher for a long time, super spiritual and whatnot. So I love like tapping into that side, that quiet side, meditating and whatnot. But right now I literally wake up in the morning and I have to force myself to do that. I want to get on Twitter and I want to see what I've missed. I want to know what's coming. So there's right. a little part of me that is a little excited about the time that we're living in right now. Do you ever feel that way? Absolutely. But I actually had the reverse of because well, I was full blown asleep. I wasn't really I mean, I've always been kind of a spiritual person because I was raised that way. I was raised Buddhist, actually Buddhist and Catholic. But um, and I was, was always kind of interested in that stuff, but I was full blown asleep. Then when I first got into this, it was information nonstop. Before I even opened both my eyes, my phone was in front of my face. I had to know what was going on. I was like so addicted to the information. And then once I started to uncover things for myself and this picture started to be painted and I started to actually understand because let's face it, I was basically brain dead. I had no idea like how our government worked or anything, anything like that. I had to educate myself and I did it rapidly and I could not get enough information. It was just nonstop. I wanted to read wow. and be online. And then when the inauguration happened, I just completely imploded. I was like, mm -hmm. I couldn't pay attention anymore. I don't make this. None of this makes sense anymore. Uh, try, everything was just getting to me emotionally. And I actually had to take a step back and focus more on the spirituality aspect of things. That makes perfect sense. I think everyone took a blow on January 20th. Um, every, it was a collective sigh of what the F. Um, right. I, I, I went through it. It took, it took me a couple of days to come out of that, that whole, that valley <laughs> that I talk <laughs> about all the time. Um, because we thought we knew maybe what was going on, or at least we had a lot of hopium about what was going on, but we didn't. So, wow, you really are going through the Great Awakening, which is probably why you're called the Kate Awakening. You have truly been awakened from everything in the past couple of years. Yeah, it was very, it was very rapid. It was explosive. It was, I mean, I physically changed. Everything about me started to change. I started to take better care of myself. I was sleeping less and eating less, but feeling more energized. I got off of antidepressants, even though I was learning about all of these horrific things. And, and these were problems that were unsolvable. I felt like just because I was finally confronting it honestly for the first time, it made me feel stronger. And I was always low key depressed, had anxiety, et cetera. Then after I had my son, I went through postpartum depression. That's why I got on the antidepressants in the first place. But then mm -hmm. once I was on them, I was kind of feeling like a zombie, but I wasn't living terrified anymore. Wow. So I stayed on them for a few years. And then once, um, you know, it's funny. Do you know who Jordan Sather is? Yes. Okay. So I was watching Jordan Sather. This is before I knew him. And, um, I, he was, he was doing some podcasts and he said, I had kind of been thinking about, you know, like looking like every day, taking my antidepressants as I'm starting to feel healthier, I'm starting to feel more connected to God, to what I, my purpose here in life. I'm looking at these antidepressants that I'm taking every day. And I'm like, Ugh, I don't, I don't want to be doing this. And then I was listening to Jordan one time and he just said, you know, if you're looking for that sign to get off your antidepressants, just, this is it. And I was like, Okay. Wow. <laughs> it was just like, you know, you know how synchronicities are and you know how those things just start to line up once you start yep. paying attention. So that was all it, that was all it took. And I was like, okay, I'm going to get off of them. Congratulations. That's amazing. Wow. Your awakening is, is authentic. It's um, organic. It's, it's full. Um, I was kind of awake already. I woke up the day after 911 a long mm -hmm. time ago. So, but not as awake as I thought I was, you know, I'm still awake every day. I'm still learning new things. Um, I just, I'm not as shocked anymore. I think we're all getting very accustomed to the nefariousness that is our government and the people that we voted for and the newscasters we've listened to. So not much surprises me that much anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, having 
learned what I've learned, and you mentioned this, my connection to source, to God, is what surprised me the most. I, who knew that politics would bring us closer to God? I mean, is that what right. happened for you as well? Yeah, I think it was just, you know, they say there's only one conspiracy. And so once you start looking into any bit of it, it all connects to, the, it's all the same thing. Every single, and I don't care if you're researching Sasquatch, I don't care if you're <laughs> researching, you know, spirituality, whatever it is, it all comes back to the same thing. And that is truth. Truth is the nucleus. And you can mm -hmm. take politics to get there. You can take spirituality to get there. You know, you could take holistic health to get there. Whatever it is your avenue is, you're going to end up in that center nucleus, which is truth. And so they all connect. That is so beautifully said. I can see mm -hmm. that now. Whatever, whatever vein brought you in, whatever got you excited or, you know, whether it was Trump. And that's what I think is so funny because I was I was just a never Trump. I wasn't a hater. I'm not a hater of anyone or anything. I was a never Trumper. I was just like, oh God, it's so annoying. Like, I just wouldn't pay attention. <laughs> yeah. um, but if someone had told me, you know, six months prior, well, in six months, you're going to wake up spiritually and your connection to God is going to deepen via the avenue of Trump and politics, I would have laughed at you. I would have been like, mm, no, you're mistaken. I don't think so. But that's what happened. And I think it's beautiful. I love it. Um, I thought it was connected to God before. But I think it was the new age, which is also a lie back then. I kind of came through the, the yoga and the, the new age way of learning what God was. And I don't think that was the right avenue for me. You know, we all have to kind of explore whatever it is. It, you know, like I said, I was raised Buddhist and then I kind of got away from it because I had some people in my ear almost convincing me satanic because it wasn't biblical or whatever you just you have to listen to yourself and you know i was also turned off to the bible and church and everything just because i saw the corruption i saw what goes on in the catholic church right. and quite frankly i think the pope is one evil no sob problem. yeah <laughs> yes so um but you know through the q drops and everything i started reading you know, some of these bible passages and things like that. And I'm like, well, there's, there's something to this. There's something in every bit of it. There's truth in all of it. And I don't think that we are actually here to know. I think it's all, almost laughable that anyone thinks that they have it figured out. I don't think that that's what this realm, this earthly platform is for. I mm -hmm. think if we were to come in, like we have that forgetting process because we're not supposed to have the answers because we're supposed to fumble around and try to figure it out and be a good person. If you were literally born and God's like, okay, here are the rules. Here's how it works. Okay, go. You're not, you're not, there's no growth there. There's no, you're just, you're just following the rules. Right. You have to learn how to tap into that heart center to know, you know, and figure it out on your own. And that's going to look different for different people. That's a really good point. Uh, not knowing is a, a human condition. We forget where we came from and we don't really know where we're going either. I think I have an idea. I'd like to think of it, but we really truly don't know where we're going when this is all over. Right. I, I like to think I'm going home. Uh, you know, none of us know, but the mystery of what we're, we're living through right now, you're right, is part of the experience and it's what makes this really exciting. And I think that's why I have this, there is this part of me that literally kind of likes what's going on right now. I don't want to see people being hurt. Right. I don't like the fact that people are dying, but we are at war. You know this. We are in a digital war. And you know, so many people in our country, Kate, do not know this. We are at war right now. And there's so many people amongst us that don't realize it because we're not like boots on the ground firing cannons at our enemies. Right. It's a diff it's a completely different kind of war. It's an information war. And it's always been that way. It's just been hidden behind yeah, you know, whatever they're showing us on the surface. Every time our, our nations have ever gone to war with each other, it's always because of the same, the same thing that's going on behind the scenes, that there is this elite class of people that actually rule the world and they do all kinds of terrible things to us. But the this is why I think Trump harped so much on our media. And he wasn't just like, listen, guys, they're messing with you or you don't trust them. They are the enemy of the people. How many times did he say that? He wanted us to know this is not just like, they're not just a little bad. They are the <laughs> thing. Because without the media, the rest of them, have, they don't have control over us. They need the media in order to brainwash us and get us, you know, focused on the things that we shouldn't be focused on. So the information is what we are fighting against right now. And that's why it's so important that, you know, we are, you know, we keep 
respawning on social media, even though we're like, okay, yeah, Twitter is owned by the enemy, but you sometimes you have to fight battles on your enemy's territory. It's true. And I still am. I'm still out there. I'm not, I'm not ready to, to give it up. I mean, they'll, they'll take me off when, when they're ready, but I'm hoping Truth Social will be here because I love the idea of having, you know, a Trump platform, but you know, at the same time I'm on Getter, but I don't post that much there. I don't want to be in an echo chamber either where you and I are just talking about everything that we already know and we're just bouncing it back and forth. It's nice to have the trolls on Twitter that who knows who you're going to touch in some way, you know, and sometimes what they write, it makes me think too, because I don't ever want to think that I know everything. I know what's going on. That is so far from the truth. I'm still learning. I wake up every morning and I pray that God sheds light on me and just lets me see the truth. And uh, I want to live that way, you know, always. Yeah. So uh, in a weird way, Twitter's helping me do that. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's so important. It's important to continue to be challenged too. Even though you even if you think you have it figured out, it's in, it's important to have your beliefs challenged because again, if you keep challenging them, if it's the truth, you're going to keep arriving arriving at the truth no matter how many times you challenge that. And going back to the echo chamber thing, you know, the the difference I see about truth social is because Trump is who he is, and they can't help but hate him. They can't help but photo they hate him so much they have to focus on him. The tr I believe Trump is the only one that's going to get everybody back on the same plat platform. Opposition and his fan, you know, it's going to be everyone all there collectively again. So wherever Trump goes, everyone's going to go, even the people that don't like him. There's no question about it. He just canceled his press conference on the 6th. Mm -hmm. I was kind of hoping that was going to be kind of, we keep hoping from, for mother of all bomb, right? Keep waiting for these Moabs. Oh, yeah. It's not going to happen that way. Obviously we just keep getting these, just like Q has told us for years, drip, drip, drip. I'm just dying for like one big giant Moab. So I would love to have some massive thing dropped on us. Just like one win. <laughs> just one truth. Yes, I know. Um, just one little sliver of vindication. Cause I mean, for those of us who have followed Q and have been outspoken about it, I mean, we get hate by every we get hated by everyone. Everyone hates us. I mean, even the MAGA people are like look down their nose at us and everything. But when you were following the Q drops, I mean, there are certain things that Q proved that are not they're not easy to explain. And I think that was completely done on purpose. There are no Cliff's Notes version of the Q drops. You you mm -hmm. have to read them all. And um, that's that's the brilliance of it. So, you know, we know that we look like crazy, deranged conspiracy theorists. They connect us to all kinds of things that have literally nothing to do with Q. Q never mentioned, but okay, well, this person talks about Q and they also talk about whatever this is. So JFK, that, like yeah, JFK, yeah, JFK Jr. Jr. That was, a, that was an Perfect anon example. Yeah. Q literally said in a Q&A, somebody asked, is JFK mm -hmm. Jr. alive? And he said, no, yeah. or they said no. Correct. Um, so it's it's laughable to say that that's a Q theory because it's literally the opposite of what Q said. I think those people are, some of them are well-meaning, but some of them are here intentionally to make us look terrible. I mean, you're going to have infiltrators. You're going to have people that are assets for the other side coming and aligning themselves, making them kind of voices in this community, and then saying terrible things, racist things, anti-Semitic things, whatever, so that the mainstream media has something to focus on and go after us. Because really, at the crux of it, Q is like, it couldn't be more peace peaceful. It couldn't be more unifying. That's the message. I know. I really wish that more people would just look into the drops and realize it's it's not a conspiracy theory. It's like a conspiracy truth. Um, I'm fascinated by it. I don't know. Do you think we're ever going to hear from Q ever again? I do. I do. Even if it's just like a congratulatory, we made it, whatever. I do think that we will. But at the same time, I know it's not necessary um, because I do think we have it all. I do think that if like you go back and you reread the drops, you're going to get new stuff from it than you did the first or second time you read them. And we have way more than we know. So I don't know if it matters if Q comes back or not. I know it's really interesting. Um, I believe that we stopped. One of the reasons they stopped back in December of, of last year was we were becoming a little too, um, we're relying on Q a little too much. I think we were starting to hold you know, the Q intelligence up to a, a, on, a, on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's interesting because it wasn't until after Q stopped and then after the inauguration, and that's when I really started to delve into my spirituality because I think I was so caught up in the drops 
you know, every single day, that's all it was for me. And I don't know if it was the same thing for you, but when they stopped, it was almost like we had to turn to God. Yeah. We didn't have the answers anymore. We didn't even have the map or the puzzle. Right. Think about this too. I go back to, you know, one thing that so many people get hung up on is Trump with this, with the jab stuff. Mm -hmm. And really in this, we have not been given a hero to turn our brains over to. Cause a lot of us were close to, I mean, I'd follow Trump anywhere. I really would. I, I, but I'm also not, I'm also going to question when he says things that I don't agree with. And I mean, they, they want us, they want to label us as cult followers or whatever. We're the only cult I've ever heard of that literally boos our cult leader when he says something that we don't like. <laughs> that we right? don't like. He gets booed at his own rallies for talking about it. But maybe there's a portion of that that's intentional because we need to wake up and stop trying to follow anyone blindly, not even Trump, you know, um, not Q, not anyone. We got to rely on ourselves. And so maybe they need to give us things every once in a while that make us go, wait, wait a second. What did he just say? I don't agree with that. Right. Yeah. I'm certainly not taking the jab just because he says they're safe and that we should take them. Um, right. I know you're, you, I've had a show with Patel. I know you're close and tight with Patel and I love his theory. I do love the theory of devolution. A, it's so filled with hopium. It, it yeah. kind of gives us a new, a new pathway to, to go down and decipher. Yeah. Um, I think there's a very good chance that that, that could be going on again. We don't know. I think that's right now. That's the most cogent explanation. Right for what's happening because nothing else seems to make sense. Nothing that's going on out there makes any sense to me other than the devolution theory. Yeah. I, I mean, same here. And that could honestly, if the devolution theory is correct, that could also be why Q has not posted since the inauguration. And wouldn't it be kind of telling if Trump comes back and then Q starts posting again? So that would be interesting. Again, I don't know. I, you know, I know that you've probably stopped um, guessing. I don't know anymore. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Don't do timelines. Don't, I have no idea what's going on. I'm trying to just enjoy the ride. And I decided to throw my hat in this ring. I couldn't stop thinking about doing a show. And this Sacred Valley podcast started a little more spiritual. And I just, I have to turn it to the truth movement. I, it's all I think about when I wake up in the morning. It's yeah. something I'm passionate about. So I wanted to connect with you because I know that you know, you're, you're awakening and I know you've been a huge inspiration to a lot of people. So how do we balance, you know, our God centered self with the craziness that's going on right now, other than what we're doing? Well, you have to take care of yourself first and foremost, otherwise you are not going to be helping anybody. So, um, once I started to feel myself getting burned out by, uh, you know, it's, it wasn't just the sharing of information and it wasn't just, um, you know, having people fight me on that. I was, I have people that come after me. They try to dox me, my family members. They say all mm -hmm. kinds of things about me. I mean, you, it's, I knew that was coming. I knew before I even started my show, I had friends that did it. They were like, they warned me, you know, it's, it's not pretty. It's not fun. Um, being out there. That's why a lot of our people, the people in our movement are anonymous. You don't see their names. You don't see their faces because they have to protect themselves, their families, their jobs. Right. And so this was the only thing I could really offer is that I don't really have any shame. I'm, I'm kind of comfortable talking to people and whatever. I don't have any skeletons in my closet. You, I, I'm an open book. Everything about me is out there. So this is what I could offer. And um, yeah, so it, it, it hasn't been fun. Uh, I mean, it's been fun at times, but it's also been, um, I, I was forced to start getting back into the spirituality because I'm like, if I don't, if I don't ground myself, if I don't level out, if I don't find my own strength, I am worthless to everybody, including myself. Well, so, sure. yeah. and you have a little boy, so I do. you have to be, you have to be a hundred percent for him. As you know, yep. you got to take the oxygen mask first. Yep. I feel like I think about a year and a half ago when I thought I was connected to my God, you know, whatever I, that word, I still don't have a word that encapsulates what I think our relationship to this great spirit, you know, the source is God right. is so it's just the only thing, but it doesn't, it doesn't cover it. But yeah. now when I feel how solid I am and centered and balanced, um, when I do have the slings and the arrows come at me, which I do from strangers and people who aren't strangers, unfortunately, I'm not knocked off my kilter the way that I was a year and a half ago. I'm not as sensitive 
anymore because I feel like I am in I'm in the right place. I'm speaking my truth. And I also respect the fact that not everyone is going to be in the same place that you and I are. Yeah. They're just not. And they have free will just like we do. Yeah. You know, there is this part of me that when people come after me, I almost just kind of pity them because I'm like, I work for God. <laughs> like, good luck, you know? Um, and so, uh, I mean, they could work for God too. It's a choice. It really is a choice. But it's so interesting because I feel like this great awakening is so, it's so universal and so many of us are experiencing a lot of the same things. I mean, you and I, I bet we could talk, we probably have a lot of experiences with what we went through starting our podcasts and, you know, synchronicities and challenges and things like that. But at the same time, it's so uniquely tailored to every individual and whatever it is you need to work on is what's going to start a coming up in your life. And so for me, I had kind of a social media presence before all of this. And I really was, I had all these insecurities. I put a lot of my worth into what other people were saying to me about how great I was or how many likes I got on something. If you look at those things and you put your worth into what other people are saying about you when it's the good stuff, then of course the bad stuff is going to bother you. You have to tune out from whether people are telling you you're wonderful or an a-hole. You have to just be let it wash over you and you just need to be focused on yourself and like getting yourself right. That's really good advice. I say that a lot. Um, you should mm -hmm. never take anything personally, even the good stuff. Like don't take credit for right. the compliments. And definitely don't take credit for the slings and the people right. that the bad things people say. Um, that's easy for me to do. I don't, I don't know. I guess, you know, I didn't grow up with social media. I'm older than you. And um, I grew up in the era where we would play outside until the streetlights came on. And right. Well, I mean, um, you know, but yeah, I thank God I didn't have that. I didn't have, um, I don't, I don't have, I don't, I don't mind how many people don't like me because I know I can't be everything to everyone right now. We're creating, you started a podcast, you, you were creating, you made the ultimate creation. You have a child. Mm -hmm. um, I'm creating right now. And the mind of God wants us to create every time I'm doing a podcast with you right now. And that mind of God is expanding. Um, you know, and it will touch the people that it needs to touch. You know, I didn't know exactly what we were going to talk about today, but I knew I wanted to kind of straddle what's going on. On this in this very moment with spirituality and how we deal with it because i know there's a lot of people out there that are really struggling with this and that are just starting to wake up yeah and i also get a lot of um you know i've got the christian community and the christian people that i've met and touched with you know we're coming together on this we have the same ethics and principles like these are these are our allies right but i get a lot of also people that are very down on me because i'm not biblical and i don't go to church and i don't call myself a christian right. and so i feel like my message to those people first of all if you feel like you have the answer you don't say okay screw you you don't have the answer. I have it. So peace. Exactly. You try to help people, right? Which is what most of my Christian friends try to do. You know, they're trying, they're trying to steer me in that direction, but they're not judgmental. But I am getting a lot of very judgmental people because I am one of, I'm like, I straddle that line. You know, I'm, um, I talk a lot with, you know, most of the people that I work with and, and we, the media are Christians, very hardcore Christians. We've got people posting Bible verses, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm also kind of in that spiritual world where, you know, people are talking about aliens and, uh, you know, our true history and all of that stuff. So, um, I'm never going to please everyone. You know, there are people that are going to be angry at me for, you know, talking too much about Jesus or not enough about Jesus or whatever it is. I can relate to you 100% because I don't consider myself a Christian. Um, I'm learning more about the Bible. I've never read the Bible front to back. I don't know if I ever will. I think there's a lot of really wonderful lessons and stories and words to be, to be taken in and to learn from. Um, I'm actually going to a class tonight that starts. It's a kingdom class and it's, it teaches you the word of God, but outside of the confines of religion. So mm -hmm. it's just, it's interesting. Yeah. I'm, you know, it's new for me. Cause like I said, I've been more spiritual my whole life. And in a way I feel like Christianity has also been hijacked by evil, oh, yeah. oh, just yeah. like politics has, just like education has, just like new, everything has. I think even Christians are being lied to in a lot of ways, um, through, the Bible is the only way. Um, well, the Bible, there's a lot of things left out of that Bible. Mm. You know, the Gnostics had a lot to say and none of it is included in the Bible from what I understand. 
Right. Well, for me, I had a lot of ex I've had a lot of experiences myself that I couldn't really explain through traditional means and things like that. So I had to kind of expand my thinking. Um, and I do think there's a lot to the Bible. I am actually reading it for the first time because it got to the point where, you know, I started looking at other people that hadn't read Q drops that had their opinion on Q. I'm like, you don't even really get an opinion because you haven't read it. Well, same here, because I've never read the Bible. So I'm like making myself go through it because I, I am interested and it is compelling. Like you said, there's there, there's a lot of good stuff in there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't think it's complete. And I don't believe that you have to go through any special book or any special person in order to have a connection with God. We all have a direct line to God and we have to figure out, you know, our best way of getting there. I commend you for self-reflecting like that. That takes yeah. a big person to realize, <laughs> hey, wait a second, I'm being hypocritical here. I can't, I can't diss these people for not reading 5,000 Q drops when I haven't even read the Bible yet. Right, exactly. Exactly. Not everyone's going to read the Q drops and it's okay. You know, Q doesn't have to be for everyone. I often say, and I know, I know what you're going to, I'm going to ask you anyway, but I have a feeling, where would we be today? Where would your state of mind be today without the Q drops? Oh, I'd still be on the couch watching Bravo. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, so for me, you know, a lot of people that call Q a PSYOP, and, and really Q is a PSYOP. Q was a PSYOP. It was mm -hmm. a psychological operation to wake people up. PSYOPs are not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I see the communities we've formed. I see the work we're doing. I see the information we're putting out on Telegram, Twitter, YouTube, podcasts, um, this, this was, Q was a catalyst. Trump was another catalyst, but, uh, Q was my catalyst. And so, um, I don't think, um, anything was going to get me there as rapidly as, as Q did. I don't think we'd have as much hopium without Q. I mean, Q really, really gave us a, a pathway to hope and I still have it. I still have a very glass half full, you know, point of view as to what's mm -hmm. going on. Um, unfortunately, people are going to have to suffer in order to get there. Not everyone is going to have a great awakening like you did. Not everyone, and that's their choice. Again, I believe that we have, our soul has a purpose and an idea of what we're going to experience. We don't know what it is. I don't know if, I, I never know what my soul experience is. I feel like it's here. It's part of who we are, but I don't know what it is. But right. I think I'm doing it. This is part of it. I feel like this is part of my part of my sole purpose. Yeah. I don't know where I'm going with it. I don't know what, what's going to happen. I just like having conversations. And if we can help one person who's struggling with, geez, how do I do this? How do I live a spiritual life and get closer to God? And maybe there are people out there who haven't gotten close to God yet. I mean, that's very possible, I suppose. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's possible. But you I mean, you feel it. I know I can tell, I can just tell, I mean, this, you are, this, you are doing what you're meant to do. You're great at this. You, this is, God has given us all gifts and it's going to be different for everyone. And you just kind of have to surrender to it, which, which you're doing. And so I just, I want to commend you and just tell you to keep going because I, I mean, I know it, I feel it. You can feel it too. You're doing the right thing. And this is exactly, you're going to take this very far and people, people need you, you know? Well, I'm willing to be that person. Like I said, I always try to to be that that um, that conduit. Um, as a life coach, I always try to pray first and make sure I give my client what they need to hear. Not what I think they need to hear, yeah. but what their higher good needs to hear. And it's the same for people out there. So um, what do you think people need to hear right now? What's the, what's the biggest message that people need to hear, do you think, Kate? Um, that to just not give up, that no matter what happens, whatever is going on in the external world, you still have control over yourself and your internal world. And to just keep working on yourself and keep telling yourself that it's okay, get aligned with God and and feel a bigger purpose. Like faith is is a big thing. And and keep in mind, you know, we are up again. I mean, a lot of us were atheists and, you know, there's a reason that society was pushed in that direction because if you don't believe that there's something bigger out there, if you don't believe that there are, you know, um, there's more to it than this life, you're going to live a completely different lifestyle. Um, and you're not going to fight as hard. You're just going to be like, oh, well, whatever, I'll be dead someday. Um, but what we're doing here is important and, uh, you know, not just to be trying to fix our world and, and help our fe fellow man, but you're always going to have the duty of of growth in this life. So what is it that we each individually need to grow on? How do, how do we need to cultivate ourselves and become better people so that we leave this world better than we entered it? Yes, I think um, <laughs> having that connection, calling God in, even if you don't have one, just call call in that 
that space, you know, call in the spirit and just see what happens. Um, if someone doesn't know, mm -hmm. um, just get strong with it for sure. I feel like I didn't think that evil existed a couple years ago. I really didn't think mm -hmm. I knew, I knew bad things happened, but I didn't know evil existed the way that we know now. And evil was even connected to me and I didn't know it. Yeah. Um, and the thought of that and operating that same way, and it was with you as well. Like if you're talking about being depressed, that's an evil entity. That's something taking over you and blocking you from your connection to mm. your source. There's no question about it. Um, but there is evil and it's hijacked a lot of everything that's in our life. And being aware of it now, I think is so helpful. Yes. Um, that yeah. was the biggest, like I, I didn't, that's how, well, that's what led me to God. It was that first I had to realize that real evil existed. And once I saw that real evil existed, you have to say, okay, well, common sense tells me if, if true evil exists, then true good exists also. And, and so there is a God, but I was seeing that evil. And, and I guess that's what I, I mean by like taking care of yourself because we're so concerned with, we want to control everybody. We, we are so clear on, on how things should be run and, and what we need to get rid of and the systems that need to go and what other people should be doing. But we have to be really careful about what we're accepting into our lives, what we're consuming, um, the lifestyle that we're leading. Like, what are you doing that's unhealthy for you? What uh, unhealthy relationships? Are you consuming media that is um, leaving you open to these negative vibrations? I mean, when you net, when you vibrate in that negative frequency, you draw in all kinds of stuff. They're like moths to a flame. Mm -hmm. And um, we have been programmed in that. So like getting out in nature taking care of yourself spiritually and taking care of your health, connecting with children, connecting with animals, um, you know, reading, taking salt baths, like whatever it is from the smallest thing to the most profound thing to be getting yourself, uh, you know, in a healthier state. All really good advice. Uh, a friend of mine, when I first started waking up a couple of years ago, she, the first conversation I had about this, she explained to me how the cross is you know the left you have the left side of the cross and that represents the left also in politics and she told that's when she told me the left has been hijacked back after Ken Kennedy was assassinated that's when the left got hijacked and it's been you know progressively building over the years and I think if you look at the way that we've lived our lives um, we're so left brain oriented and I feel like they've kept us from the right side they've kept us from the right brain and being balanced. We have lived a life of, you know, a lot of people are so comfortable with strife and, and struggling and it's the whole left side of the brain and the right side is not welcomed as easily. I mean, a little boy, you know, you little boys back in the day were taught, you know, you don't cry, you're, you're too strong to cry. Whereas now I think a lot of people are raising their kids to realize, no, it's totally normal to have emotions and to feel. Mm -hmm. So I would say lean into the right side a little bit more. If you're extremely left brain, thank God I'm not, not thank God. I, I wish I had a little more left brain. <laughs> I'm like all right side. Creative. I just need more brain all over. Oh Can my God. I need like to be balanced. I'm so right brained, yeah. but I guess if, if I had to choose one or the other, I'd rather be more right. But I would love to be balanced, but I would say yeah. for those who are like super left brained, maybe lean into that. That I like the, the idea of the center of the cross. It sounds nice and balanced to me. Yeah, I like that too. And I've been talking a lot lately about like a, a, the three brains, actually, the, the cranial brain, the heart, and the gut, and to tap back more into these because these, these are not as easy to manipulate. We, they've done massive studies on how to mani manipulate this brain. They know how to get us. Look at the advertising industry. They know the tricks to, to fool this brain, but they don't have tricks to fool the other two brains. And that's why when you first have a reaction to something when you're hearing it, pay attention to that because these two brains actually work a lot faster than this one does. And then your ego kicks in and starts telling you, okay, no, this is da-da-da-da-da. But if we can use them all three in unison, we will have a lot easier time discerning the truth. That is really valuable information for people to know. I and mean, we're learning more now how the gut is our second brain mm -hmm. or maybe even your first brain. And it's so important to have gut health. Mm -hmm. And most of us know what that gut feel is. And that still small voice that I know at some point or another, someone has not listened to it and it wasn't the right thing to do. Right. But it's true. I, I can feel sometimes my heart leaping. And then sometimes my brain will come in and talk myself out of it. Yep. When I should just let my heart leap the way that it wants to leap.
Yeah, it's true. And we're told, you know, that's woo woo. No, that's what crazy people do. That's not being responsible. Think about all the things that we're taught in our brain that that says, okay, no, this is the dominant. This is what we need to lead with because this is the only thing that's true. Logic and reasoning. Trust the science, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. We've been taught, like, I feel like the right has been hijacked mm -hmm. in a lot of different ways, like the right side of us. And it's time to, you know, just to come more into balance and I think it's happening when I look around, if you do a snapshot from last year at this very time, look at how different our world has become yep. and the people that are waking up. Um, I'm going to ask this. I know you don't know, but I'm just curious. Where, where's this going? Where does this, uh, what's, what's coming up in the next year? I don't know what's coming up in the next year, but I, I look back just like you do and I see, I can see the path that we're on and we're still, we're still going. People are still waking up. I, I, I lost everyone when I started talking about this stuff and people called me crazy. They called me a cult member. They called me all kinds of things. Oh, yeah. And a lot of those same people have now started to come back to me and say, okay, wait a second. Help me. Help me. Explain really? It to me. Yes. That has not happened to me yet. Um, it, is, it is happening to me on wow. a, a grand scale. That's amazing, girl. Yeah. Wow. So I, I mean, think I, we're headed in the right direction. I definitely think we're heading in the right direction. Um, just like I don't want to know the day that you know, I leave this planet. I have no interest in knowing that. Um, I don't want to really know the ending of this yet because I think part of the excitement and just being part of something so massive, I can't, I can't think of any other time in our life and in, in, in our, in the history of our, of our world that has been this massive. Yeah. And this is huge. What's going on right now. I agree. I think this is the, this is the biggest, this is the culmination of everything that came before it. And we get to live during this time and it is, it is 100% about, about focusing on what it is that we are doing internally because you're going to have an impact. Like everything you do makes a ripple and everything you do is going to um, have an influence on somebody else. You could be a very big, without even knowing it, just by standing your ground, you could be an inspiration to many people. So yeah, even if you don't know, I think even if we don't know what's going on, I would just want to stay open. Like I said, I don't want to miss anything. I don't want to get so myopic and and think that our side is the right side. Right. Um, you know, our way is the only way. I really don't ever want to be that person. It's hard because we have very strong opinions and we have a lot of stuff to back up what we feel and what we think. But I I, I, I didn't know. Like I said, I'm I'm much more awake this year than last year. So I'm always excited to like be better next year. Yeah. Yeah, I think to me, the Great Awakening has not been about finding the answers. It's just about finally asking questions. And really, the more I re research and more I learn, the more I understand. I don't know nothing. I don't. I really don't. And so it's I don't fight against people as far as like my information versus your information. What I'm trying to do is get people to let go of their death grip of whatever they think they know. Because, mm -hmm. because that was the most freeing thing for me when I realized I was so wrong about so many things. And that is freeing, really. But you know how you know how hard it is for some people? Like, I'm so good at being wrong because it's happened so many times. I'm like, <laughs> oh, yep, <laughs> hand, hand up. Like, I, it's so, it comes so easy for me now. But I've done a lot of ego work. I've done a lot of shadow work. I've done a lot of plant medicine that's kind of expanded my mind and my heart. But, you know, it does not come easy for a lot of people. A lot of people will die on that sword rather than say, you know, I made a mistake, whether it's with taking the vaccination. Um, I can't imagine what, if people are starting to wake up to the truth of that, how do you live with taking something that could potentially harm you? That's a really tough reality to come to terms with. It is, but I mean, they're all, they're all harsh realities when we when we look at, you know, when, when Q said truth would put, you know, whatever people in the hospital, it's true. I mean, think about when you like cancer, for example, and people that have lost loved ones to can to cancer or have suffered through it themselves or gone through chemotherapy and just how ugly and awful and and terrible cancer is and what if these people were to find out that not only did these people have the cure to it the entire time but maybe they even created it you know like that's a that's a concept that would people could not grasp i have friends who lost children to cancer mm. how are those people going to come to terms with 
some of some of these things. People that lost their loved ones in wars that were unnecessary. People right. that lo- you know all of these things. And so the, you know there's a there's a titillating aspect to learning the truth and everything, but the but the crux of it is very dirty and ugly. That's a really good point. It isn't just this um, myopic to what's going on right now, but there are so many truths coming out. And I have a friend who whose husband was just cured of cancer. He was given a death sentence in January and he, they went to an alternative healing guy out in Houston. Um, and he literally is almost cancer free right now. But my friend feels so not burdened, but she, she said she saw children being brought in on gurneys from, you know, hospice. And then they walked out alive and okay and healed but she said, people don't have to die from cancer. What are we supposed to do about this? So now she has this experience in less than a year. She watched her husband get his life back, but she doesn't know what to do with it. Right. Right. And, you know, fear is a, is a terrible thing. It is, it, it is a control system and they've got it. So in, in our minds, like I watched a friend of mine who knew all of these things. He knew that there were alternatives out there. He knew that there were people out there with testimonies of curing their own cancers. And still when he was looking down the barrel of cancer himself, he still opted for chemotherapy because there's so much of that programming. That's like, no, listen to the officials. Don't, don't take your life into your own hands. And that is scary. Freedom is scary. Sovereignty is scary. We want to go none night. We want people to tell us what to do. And that's what they've provided for us with the entire medical industry. We've got doctors that we're just going to hand our brain over to. Well, whatever my doctor says goes. No, it's up to you. You got to do the research. There's so much out there about healing therapies for all kinds of things that we've been told are a death sentence. And if you take it and take matters into your own hands, like the possibilities are endless. It's so true. Those words, when you said those words, freedom and sovereignty, it gives me a jolt of um, excitement. I feel like it's my soul's language. Mm-hmm. I've always been passionate about freedom. Um, it's it's in my, my chart. Someone did a chart on me once yeah. and they're like, boy, freedom is like really important to you. I'm like, thank you for acknowledging that. It I'm really, not, yeah, I'm not kidding you. That came up for me too. Yes. <laughs> Freedom and what was the other thing? Justice. Freedom and justice. justice. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm big on justice. Like, I do not like seeing injustices. I'll, I stay up at night. <laughs> so interesting. Yeah, for me, it's truth with the capital T. After I did my, I cleared my first chakra way back in the day in the 90s when I did my chakras, everything changed after that. And um, I want to hear the truth all the time, even if it hurts me. Uh, I want to speak the truth all the time in a gentle way. I don't want it to hurt you, but sometimes the truth does hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you are, and I am ready. I wish they would just rip the damn bandaid off, but I know that that's not the healthiest way to get this done. This whole operation is massive. I don't know. I don't know what's coming next. I'm honored to be a part of it. Um, for the last part here, I want to do a segment call because this is literally, if I had a dollar, Kate, for every single time I said this in the day, I would have a really nice stack of cash right next to me <laughs> to buy some crypto or some gold and silver with. <laughs> if not hypocritical, what the hell are they? Seriously. There is so much hypocrisy on the, on the left. And I hate to say this because I have some really wonderful people in my life who are left and they're liberals, but they don't mm-hmm. fall on, in the category of, you know, wokeism or they don't agree with the stuff that's going on right now. So I don't mm-hmm. want to make a blanket statement, but the hypocrisy that goes on in our, in our, in our world today is, is insane. So I'll give you an example and you might have one or two things. If not, I have like a short list. Um, if we go back to like last year when, when you know, George Floyd was being raised to some level of, of God that I've never seen in my life, yet allegedly Ashley Babbitt was murdered in our state capitol by a mm-hmm. black man, by the way. Not that that really matters. Um, it matters to the left. That's why you bring it up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because um, they would they want to say, you know, the race of the person who's doing, doing exactly. the murdering. But um, no, the hypocrisy is insane right now. But I feel like that's part of where I get some of my sense of humor because I have to laugh at it. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, hypocrisy is a is a is a massive thing that we are. I mean, they don't they don't make any sense. They don't even care that they look hypocritical. They don't they don't even care that they it's so obvious and and yeah it's we don't want to we don't want to do the whole right versus left republican versus democrat this versus that because we know that that's a program that we've all gotten caught up in and they want us to be pitted against each other but the truth is that the ideologies are not equal on the left and the right and that the left has been a vehicle for them to get more control in through uh government you know so it has been a tool of uh the the evil people more than 
the right has been. So, um, you know, it's, it's an important, it's, it's important to point that out. And it's not, I mean, there are lovely people. I also have beautiful people that are, you know, would tell, would call themselves leftists and whatever. And, and right. I'm not so concerned with that. It's really just about like, what are you, what are you doing? That's, um, helpful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And there are hypocrites on the right as well. Like I said, I don't like oh, yeah. making a blanket statement. Like everyone on this side is this way. But, um, you know, one of the biggest things for me, I would love to go to Mexico this winter. My best friend lives um, in this great little little ocean town. And I'd love to leave for two or three weeks. But I can't go to Mexico and come back to my own country without mm -hmm. either being vaccinated or getting tested. Whereas there's millions, I think, now are crossing our border and they're, they're just free to walk over. That really, that makes my blood boil. Right. Well, I think what we're seeing, I hope, is, I mean, this this form of hypocrisy has always existed, but now it is becoming glaringly obvious. And mm. whether you want to say that it is being intentionally done because it's some kind of covert operation or whether it's just God's timeline, we are seeing things ramp up to a degree that they cannot be uh, ignored. Uh, we are seeing Biden is highlighting every wrong thing to do as a president. He couldn't be worse. He couldn't be a worse president. Is that because, you know, he's being told what to do? I have no idea. But the fact of the matter is it is waking a lot of people up and they are they are being forced to look at things that they would have ignored in the past. We think we want him gone, but I tweeted this out the other day. I'm what do we think is behind him? Like, is it really that bad right now? I mean, it is, but how much worse is it going to get? Because if he if he has to leave office for whatever reason they 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 choose, that that's something we could do squares on. You know, right. how is Biden going to leave office? <laughs> um, but then if if Kamala Harris comes in behind him, do you think she's going to be better? You think this country is going to start turning itself around? There's no way. No. No, no, but it's a, I mean, we're always, we've always been given the illusion of choice anyway. It was always going to be like this. I mean, imagine if we would have gotten Hillary Clinton instead of Trump, we would have been. Mean, that's like one of those things like, you, you know, you didn't get on the airplane that crashed. Like you can't think exactly. about it too much because it could drive you crazy. But I don't think we realized how close we were. I remember driving and I live in Florida a few years ago, driving along I-95 and I-75 and there were literally stacks of coffins like plastic coffins do you remember yeah do you remember seeing any of this stuff or hearing about any of this yep i i actually saw it and i promise you i think they were getting ready back then because i don't see them anymore i don't know what happened to them i don't know what they were for but it's really frightening to think of what could have happened if god did not intervene and place trump where he placed him mm -hmm. yeah yep. it's thank god we don't have to go down that route um exactly exactly well we'll see um, I'm really honored to have had you on my show, finally. Thank I think you. you're awesome. I think you have a beautiful spirit. You shine and you have so much to share. Where do you think you're going to be going from here? Are you still going to be doing your podcasting? I know you meet on Friday nights with Patel and Beer, Beer at the parade. Yes, that's a new fun thing that we've kind of done because, you know, uh, Patel is so, uh, he's so that left brain, you know, I love girl. that. And so, you know, Beer and I are cute people, Patel isn't. And so it's just kind of a fun conversation of we're, we're all three very different. And um, so that's been a fun project. We do that. It's called Liberty Den. We do that on Friday nights. And um, I mean, I've got a telegram. I'm still doing my live chats, you know, from time. I don't even call them shows because it's literally just a place to hang out. I don't really cover the news anymore. I'm just there talking with people. And I'll be doing it as long as I think I'm being useful to anybody. And then hopefully we get some disclosure and I can go be a farmer and a mom and just. Uh, yeah. yeah. Just right <laughs> off, right off into the sunset with your yes. son. Yes. Well, I hope that too. I'm not sure what we have, uh, what we have coming up, but I know that you you'll have your finger on the pulse. Uh, I really hope you come back again. I know you and I could talk about anything like today. Yeah. I just chose, let's talk about spirituality and maybe, maybe there's some people out there who can get something out of this. So hopefully that happened. Yeah. Um, I'll put all of your contact info below and um, people can check you out. People know who you are. No one knows who I am. And I think I kind of like it that way, but um, <laughs> I appreciate you coming on my show. <laughs> well, thank you so much. It's It's been awesome. And people are going to know who you are soon enough. You're, you're, you're doing an important, you've got a light in you and you got to share it. Hmm. Thanks, girl. I really appreciate that. <laughs> hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us today on Sacred Valley. I I've missed everyone. I'll be back again. I have... Um, David Rodriguez next week, Nino will be on my show, and I have um, Dr. Zelenko and um, Clay Clark coming up as well. So they're going to be um, 
Yeah, they reached out to me yesterday, so I, I haven't gotten the dates yet, but that'll happen sometime soon. So I will see everybody again soon. Take care.